Hey everyone, at the request of one of the viewers, I'm doing another five animal, another top five list. And this one is about frogs, and specifically some kind of really cool frogs. They are a really cool pet, and to be completely honest with you, I 100% agree. I absolutely wish I could have a whole room dedicated to just a bunch of really cool one-off pairs of all these crazy frogs, because the, just the diversity of them is so cool. Not to mention, if you get males in there, you'll actually get them, you know calling out and doing the calls for the ladies and that sounds really really cool and i absolutely wish i could do that but that being said i don't have the the time i don't have the space and to be completely honest with you i don't have the full knowledge for amphibians in general let alone these kind of interesting species of frogs but i know enough to be dangerous and i definitely know where to go to to find out more about some of them so today i'm going to talk about five species of frogs that you can keep as a pet that are really cool and a little bit different. So we're gonna get the start, we're gonna start this off with one that is probably the easiest to obtain and definitely one of the odder ones, and that is the budgets frog. So a lot of the animals when we start getting into kind of like the weird one-offs have a bunch of different like fun little pet names. One of which, so the budgets frog, it's this giant wide mouth, weird flat faced bug eye little frog that looks absolutely adorable. And then because of that, that also why it gets its name, the Hippo Frog, which is absolutely hilarious. And then they have another name, which I'll get to probably why they got this nickname in just a second. Sorry, the iguana's yelling in the background. Um, and that is the Freddy Krueger Frog, the Budgets Frog, the Freddy Krueger Frog, right? So they're these very wide mouth little things. They only can, the females are larger than the males and they can supposedly get up to six plus inches I've only ever seen ones that are around like four and a half to five inches or so, but supposedly some females can get really big. Their mouths are literally a third of their body. And inside of that mouth is this really hard plate on their top jaw that has almost kind of like teeth like protrusions, which are good for grabbing onto stuff. And then on the bottom, which is I think where they got the nickname Freddy Krueger Frog, they have two almost little fangs. No, they're not venomous, but they are two actual fangs that are meant so the mouth closes down, the big wide mouth that will go for anything that can fit in it, and sometimes more than that can fit in there. The teeth clamp down and hold down on it, and the fangs definitely hold on to a place, which, you know, maybe if they're going for smaller animals, and you know the drill, what those guys are for. But these guys are really cool pets, and they are fairly available, especially on, like, some importer lists, and if you go to, like, reptile shows, or even, like, you know, places like Josh's Frogs, they will probably have some different kinds of uh, budget frogs available. But that being said, they may not be the best for a beginner going into that, and that's because where they're from normally found in the wild they're found down in south america sorry excuse me as i look down below they're kind of found in like paraguay bolivia and some other little countries or little countries some other countries around there um but they kind of go into a dormancy they don't really have like spring and summer down there in the southern hemisphere like we have in the united states um because that's where most of you guys are um it's more of a wet and dry and it is still winter and summer but it's still really wet and dry and during the dry season they kind of go dormant for about three-ish months and they have not fully kind of gotten rid of that even after they've been successfully bred in captivity for several generations excuse me and so because of that you will probably end up kind of cutting their lifespan short if you keep their enclosure with mostly aquatic. So they really need a terrestrial spot and an aquarium spot for them to kind of dig down and go dormant for a little while. And I think that can kind of lead to their like their best quality lives. That being said, they do need nice, fresh, clean with a nice little filter. Nothing crazy, super fast moving, but they do need that water because that's how they hunt their ambush predators. They'll sit there in the water with their little eyes above water and then anything comes along, they'll absolutely snag it. Really cool frogs, and if you want to put in a little bit of time, spend a little bit of research and get a bigger enclosure that can do a nice little, like, half and half, like, polydarium, uh, or however you pronounce that word, because I'm incapable of it, of half terrestrial and half fully aquatic, then I think these guys would make an amazing, intelligent, interactive, and boisterous frog for you guys to have as a pet. The next one is one that I eventually hope to get, but I need a little bit more space for a full-grown adult, and that is the Solomon Island Eyelash Frog, or the Solomon Island Leaf Frog. These guys are really cool. They're a decent-sized terrestrial frog. Nothing, like, super big like a cane toad or anything like that, but a decent-sized little terrestrial frog. They come in a crazy variety of colors. So, obviously, they come from, you know, the Solomon Islands, as their name suggests. These guys are really cool, and they're basically 
basically a mimic camouflage kind of an animal where they look like they blend in like kind of dead and decaying leaves of different trees, which is probably why there are so many different colors that naturally occur. And they just blend in with the leaf litter during the day. And then at night they come out and ambush and hunt them for fruit uh, for all the different bugs. So as you know, frogs, all frogs are carnivores. And most of them eat insects, although like the budget frog, they'll eat anything that they can get into their mouths. These guys are really cool. They don't need a whole lot as far as like a setup goes. The room temps are good like most frogs. Like all these frogs really room temperature is good. Anything prolonged temps over like 85 for 99% of amphibians are kind of detrimental to their health and can be absolutely dangerous if it goes that way. So the room temps are pretty good for these guys. Um, you know, nice, well-drained, humidity-keeping soil. So like cocoa earth mixtures and things like that. Good layers of, you know, isopod springtails, leaf litter like oak leaves and stuff. Make really great naturalistic camouflage for them to hang out and sit in. Give them a couple hides. So with a couple of nice sized chunks of like cork bark or even like the pre-made plastic reptile hides will work really well for them to feel secure and under as well as kind of get on top of if they want. Um, these are nocturnal. A lot of people don't keep UVB on all these things. I say if you can do it absolutely 100% give them the UVB. Even if they are nocturnal, pretty much every animal out there can benefit to some degree with a little bit of UVB. So moving on, this next one actually isn't a frog, but it kind of gets thrown in there a little bit because it's completely aquatic, similar to like the African clawed frogs. And that is the Pippa Pippa toad. So this is a toad, not a frog. And there are a couple differences that are honestly, for the most part, kind of lost on me. And we're just kind of highlighting why they're really cool. They are also called the common Suriname toad, and they are found kind of widespread a little bit throughout kind of Central South America. So through, you know, Suriname, Brazil, uh, Paraguay, all of that kind of whole Venezuela, that little kind of Central South American area, they're kind of found throughout there. But Suriname is obviously where they get one of their names from. They are completely aquatic. Their back legs are entirely webbed. They are really cool. But these guys are famous for the way they reproduce. And yes, these guys are available as pets here too. Every single one of the animals that we're going to list off today is one of the, it can be acquired as a pet. They're probably almost all imports, although I do know that they are being bred in captivity, but I don't know to what extent. But usually when I see them, they're usually on importers list or on importers tables at shows. Um, that being said, they are famous for why they reproduce. And that is, they are the ones that give birth off their backs to where the female mother Suriname toad gives birth to their little frogs from their back. So what happens is, you know, when courtship happens, the male will essentially fertilize the eggs and roll them back over onto the female's back. They kind of adhere to there with this, some sort of probably glandular seclusion, uh, secretion that they produce. Skin forms over the fertilized egg and there it incubates in, into an entire fully formed frog there's no tadpoles there's no tails and then in 12 to 20 ish weeks depending on the temperatures of the water where they are in their range their backs kind of explode open a little bit and out of this like little honeycomb uh sh little like honeycomb structure on the back of the female toad and little fully formed amphibians come uh swimming out and that's that's it that's why they're so cool why they're so interesting they're not really endangered in most parts of their range which is why it's not super crazy why they appear on importers list but they are really cool and i think that we might start seeing them a little bit more often with kind of the increasing popularity of black water tanks and that's where those are while well, they call them black water tanks because they're not crystal clear there's a lot of like decayed plant matter and thing and cover and a lot of uh cooler slower moving water which gives it kind of this oaken kind of caramely orange color to the water which is a lot of where we find specifically of south american animals a lot of their natural habitat is where it's clean but it doesn't look crystal clear to our eyes but it's perfect habitat for a lot of these animals like mata mata turtles and the pippa pippa toad so with that in mind we're going to move on to the next one, which is probably the most famous of them. This next one, the most famous of every single one on here, made famous by the internet, and that is this guy, the sonorous war cry of a very angry toad. So the rain to the rain toad. This one is the Namibian rain toad or the desert rain toad that's been made very famous. These guys are actually endangered. So 
not going to have those, unfortunately. But there is a cousin in the same genus, in the same family of the desert toad that is a rain, not the rain toad, of the rain frog that is still a rain frog and does make very similar uh, distress or alarm or defensive cries. And that is the Mozambique rain frog. So these guys are found kind of fairly wide-ish spread throughout southeastern sub-Saharan Africa. So they are found in, you know, South Africa, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Mozambique, Tanzania, Malawi, like that whole like little kind of southeastern chunk of, of Africa. They're kind of all spread throughout there. And what's really cool about these guys is that when they are available, they're really hardy because they are found in an alarmingly large amount of habitats naturally. They're found in grassy savannas, in deserty type savannas, in high altitude, low altitude, rainforest. They're kind of found just basically any type of terrain outside of, you know, straight desert or muddy swamp, we'll find these rain frogs. And that is really cool. They have a little bit more interesting coloration to them. Sometimes the males even have almost like a maroony kind of chocolatey orange, not orange, orange, a uh, red coloration to their sides. And that's really cool. They're a small little frog. They don't get very big. You could probably keep one in like a 10, 15, 20 gallon aquarium, which would be really cool. They get their name rain frog because when it rains, especially during the rainy season, a lot of the termites will evacuate from their mounds and to, you know, then again, begin construction on them. And when they come out, these guys will just emerge and feast on all of these termites, which is really cool to see. I guess they just like come out of people's gardens and will swarm across the, the roads and stuff, searching for all these termites, which is really cool. So while we don't get, you know, the very angry war cry toad, for I just keep doing that, don't I? The angry war cry frog, we do get a cousin of them, which is really cool. And that actually might be something that I might eventually look into getting because that'd be really, really cool. So last but not least, and, all, and I really mean this, not least, is a really, really cool frog. This is a tree frog. This is the crown tree frog or the, corona or the coronated uh, tree frog. These guys are really, really cool. I haven't really seen them a whole lot in person, only once or twice, but I know there are some people working with them. These guys are found down in South and Central America. They're a medium sized tree frog. So, you know, smaller than like a milk frog, but bigger than like a red eyed tree frog, but it's still, still a good sized little froggy. Um, they have kind of this white oak looking gray, cool, dark pattern. Like it looks really cool. It's like a little mottled camo like gray camo looking frog but they get their name from these bony protrusions that just sit right on top of their head they make them look like they're you know being coronated or they have a crown which is really cool and i imagine it's something of a defense mechanism when a predator comes over and bites the frog they're expecting you know it's a little squishy frog and then they get these pointy little things they come right up there and when they bite down they go ah no which is really cool these guys are tree frogs so they're very arboreal they are nocturnal but since they are a decent sized frog, you probably want something that's, you know, pretty high and pretty wide too. So we're talking at least like 18 by 20, 24, something like that. Um, but I've been told that a 29 gallon works fairly well for like, you know, a group of three or four of them. So, you know, it's a little long, not very wide, but pretty tall, works really well for them. They do need a fair amount of humidity coming from the, the you know, the rainforests of Central America. So I know a lot of people will do usually like the coconut husk or like the Josh's frogs, ABC mix or things like that. I do know that some people will straight put them over water. So they will have kind of almost like a polydarium kind of a thing where they will have, you know, branches and leaves or even um, plants growing up from just straight water from the root. And then it'll just be over water, almost like some people have setups for like their eggs when they incubate where that's their substrate, it's just water and it's moving a little bit to keep the humidity up, which is really, really cool. They're an amazingly prolific species of frog, evidently. So if you do provide them a place to lay their eggs, so if you do it over water, they will breed fairly well for you as well. So you have to make sure that you know what you're doing with what you're gonna do with all these tadpoles. They don't have, you know, thousands of tadpoles, but they do proliferate fairly well. So if you guys are, you know, interested in any of these types of frogs, I highly recommend going and checking out Josh's frogs. That's where I get a lot of this information from. Very trusted source of information for 
all types of amphibians really they do amazing things even working with people with like conservation efforts and stuff so go check them out too um i hope you enjoyed this video sorry it might be a little bit kind of choppy a little bit dealing with a lot at the moment right now but hopefully you enjoyed the video if you have any questions comments anything like that please let me know down below in the comments um, if you're interested in checking out our podcast, a little bit longer format here for some really cool people, not just about snakes, keep calm, it's just snake podcast is the name because I'm unoriginal. But if you ever want to check that out, please do check out our Patreon. Um, we have some really cool swag and merch for you guys, as well as you know, you kind of help contribute to keeping things afloat and the betterment of uh, animals and education here on the channel. Hope you're having a great day and we'll check you next time.